Things are not looking good for Arizona State. The NCAA is breathing down their neck, Herm Edwards is in hot water, they signed the worst recruiting class of any Power 5 school, their best receiver and best running back transferred out of the program, and they don't have a starting quarterback for 2022 right now. There was a five-man battle going into the spring, but they recently picked up another addition who was more than likely going to start. That is far from a done deal though, as he was not that great at his previous school, and the other options are pretty interesting. In today's video, I want to quickly talk about Arizona State football, go through the quarterback battle that is going on there, and I'll give my thoughts on who these guys are, who I think should win, and what they are all about. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started with today's video and talk about Arizona State's quarterback battle. It seems like just yesterday, Arizona State had a good quarterback situation. Going back in time, Manny Wilkins was a multiple year starter and ended up going on to the NFL, and they immediately brought in Jaden Daniels. He was arguably a five-star recruit in the class of 2019, and he would walk into Herm Edwards' system and start from day one. He was great as a freshman, and his best performance came against Oregon as he knocked the Ducks out of playoff contention and had a miracle play to Brandon Ayuk to win that game. Daniels was a freshman All-American, and his hype for the NFL was pretty much unreal. Then the next two years happened, as he would regress tremendously in 2020, and he was downright terrible in 2021. Obviously, going into the 2021 season, it was kind of a disaster from the beginning, as Arizona State was hit with a ton of allegations, and it seemed they were in hot water. They are going into their fourth year under head coach Herm Edwards, and expectations were pretty high for the Sun Devils. Led by Daniels at quarterback, and their new star running back, Richard White, it seemed that they could be at the top of the Pac-12. So, how would they end up doing? Well, they were picked to finish third in the South Division behind USC and Utah, and they actually started the season ranked number 25 in the nation. In week one, they play against Southern Utah, where they would pretty easily win that game as they won 41-14. Week two against UNLV was pretty simple, as they won 37-10, and they now had a top 25 showdown on the road against BYU. The Cougars were undefeated in that game, and they were actually ranked number 23, and this would become the first loss of the 2021 campaign, as on the road, they'd end up losing 27-17. In week four, they would bounce back with a dominating win over Colorado before they'd have the best win of the 2021 campaign as they'd go on the road and help spoil UCLA's breakout season. In this game against the number 20 Bruins, they went on the road and won 42 to 23, and this was pretty impressive. It was good enough to get them back into the polls, and they are now ranked number 22 for a matchup with Stanford, which they won 28 to 10. At this time, the Sun Devils were five and one. They still had a chance to win the Pac-12, and things were looking pretty good. Unfortunately, that is where it starts to fall apart, as in the following week, they lost on the road to Utah. Yeah, Utah ended up going to the Rose Bowl and was a 10-plus win team, so it wasn't a bad loss by any means, but it pretty much ended their hopes of winning the division, and then the following week, they would drop a bad game to Washington State. The Cougars ended up being a bowl team, so it wasn't a terrible loss, but Arizona State was definitely the better and more talented team, and they lost this game at home, 34-21. After that, they would somewhat redeem themselves as they would beat USC at home, and despite USC being terrible last year, that's always a pretty prestigious win, so that was good for them. And then they go on the road and beat Washington, which is usually a good win, but Jimmy Lake had that team and that program in a dumpster fire mode, and they only ended up winning by 5 points. After that, they lose on the road to Oregon State, who was much improved, before they would beat Arizona 38-15 in the Territorial Cup. This would give Arizona State 8 regular season wins, and they'd end up qualifying for the Las Vegas Bowl, where they lost by 7 points to Wisconsin. But as I said, Daniels was not very good in 2021, and this now leads into the quarterback battle and the quarterback problem on the roster. You can blame it on the state of the program, you can blame it on Daniels, or you can meet somewhere in the middle, but either way, he was not good, and instead of going to the NFL, he would elect to come back for his senior year. That was very short-lived though, as Daniels would eventually enter the portal, and a lot of his teammates seemingly were happy about that, and it was a very confusing situation. He ended up going to LSU, so now Arizona State had an interesting problem on their hands. They had to find a new quarterback. So there are multiple options for the Arizona State Sun Devils, but there were really two that were going to battle it out in spring camp. The first one was Trenton Borget. He was a class of 2019 quarterback from Marana High School in Arizona, and he decided to walk on to the Sun Devils. He was not listed as part of their class according to 24-7 Sports, and he was undersized and was not given much of a chance to win the job. 
he did apparently play really well over the last year and has impressed coaches as he was thrown into the mix and told he'd have a real opportunity to start. In my opinion though, Borget may not be a power five starting quarterback. Who was his competition? Well, it was Paul Tyson. You probably know that name if you're an SEC fan, and if you're an Alabama fan, you 100% know that name. He is the grandson of the great Bear Bryant, and Tyson was not just a legacy player, as he was actually really good coming out of high school. Coming out of the state of Alabama, Tyson was also part of the class of 2019 and committed to Alabama on April 5th of 2018. According to 24-7 Sports, the 6'5 quarterback was the number 12th pro-style quarterback in the nation and the 321st best prospect overall. He was also listed as a four-star recruit, and he really had no choice but to go to Alabama. After sitting on the bench for two years, it was rumored he'd have an opportunity to start in 2021, but as we all know, Bryce Young ended up winning the job, winning the Heisman, and breaking multiple Alabama records along the way. Tyson could have stayed around and kept his name as an Alabama legend, but he decided he was going to enter the portal and actually try to do something in his college football career, and I was super happy to see that. He ended up transferring across the country as he'd go to Arizona State knowing he'd have an opportunity to play and start. It seems that Tyson and Borgett could not be any more different. One was an undersized walk-on who was only six foot, and the other was the son of Bear Bryant, a four-star recruit, and a six foot five blue chip player from Alabama. In my opinion, I thought the job was Tyson's to lose, but apparently Trenton really put up a fight, but also neither of them really separated themselves. After concerns began to grow about the quarterback room in April, Herm Edwards had this to say, quote, is the quarterback here? Is he not here? We don't know that. Hopefully he's in the building. If not, there's always a plan B in the transfer portal. I always said, a plan that can't be changed is a bad plan. So if you have a plan doing something and it has to be changed, you better be in a position to change it. So we'll be in that position to do what we have to do to make sure we get the best quarterback to play the position. Hopefully the guy is here. I'd love for that to happen, but we do not know that yet because it's the first day of practice. That's where it's at. This was extremely interesting as a big time quarterback was actually visiting the campus that weekend and a couple days later he decided to commit. That guy was Emory Jones. Coming out of high school, he was once listed as a five-star recruit and was committed to Ohio State. But after that, he flipped to Dan Mullen at Florida where he was a backup for three years before he would start in 2021. Last year as the starter for the Gators, he threw for 2,700 yards with 19 touchdowns and 13 interceptions, but there were a lot of concerns about him. One scout brought up a good point. He said, quote, Jones has plenty of SEC starting experience, but the results were mixed. Remove his six touchdown performance against Samford, and he finished the 2021 campaign with 13 touchdowns and 13 picks. His mobility and savvy will serve ASU well, but we will be in wait and see mode. That is a really good point, as when you compare the numbers, he's pretty much the same as Jaden Daniels, someone who's a little bit more mobile and did not have a great 2021 season. Combine that with the fact that Arizona State's top two wide receivers transferred out, Rashad White got drafted by the Buccaneers, and the program brought in pretty much no talent, things are not looking good, but as of right now, I would say Emory Jones wins the job. The fact that Edwards felt the need to bring in another transfer says everything you need to know about Tyson and Borget, and I definitely am not very high on Emory Jones, but maybe he'll save his career at Arizona State. What do you guys think though? If you're an Arizona State football fan, let me know who you think is going to win the quarterback battle, what is going on with the program, and how do you think you guys will do in 2022? Be sure to let me know down below, smash that like button for the algorithm, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.